Greetings and blessings from the Most High, Jah, Rastafari, Crawford Ashley here, the spiritual boxer. And I'm talking about my career, specifically the Lonsdale belt, my quest, my journey, and everything else. Part one, I got to giving my title up. Now, that was in part one. Part two now is about regaining my title. And Morris Carr had won it, so now I wanted it back, so I put the request into the board for my title back. Now, Morris Carr pulled out on me five times for whatever reasons. We was both managed by the same manager and promoted by the same one, Frank Warren. So, he pulled out. Five times the board never did anything and then uh, I get a phone call from Frank which I've gone over in the Piper fight. Now I find Nicky Piper and I beat him like I said it's it's documented it's on on the TV and the thing that pissed me off more than anything else about that fight was what happened afterwards in the dressing room. I've got a brand new belt and then an board official comes walking in and goes, Crawford, we've come for the belt. And what? We've come for the belt. I says, no, that's my belt. He says, no, you've already got one. I says, yeah, the one I've got is mine, which I've won outright. He went, yeah, that's yours. I said, so this is my belt. I says, until I lose it in the ring, then you can have it back, but right now it's my belt. He went, oh no, but we want it back, we need it back. So I says, so if Nicky Piper had won the fight tonight, would he have got to take this belt home with him? He says, yeah. I said, so this is my belt. Oh no, we need it back. And the voice in my head just says, let him fucking have it. I wish now I would have held out and said, no, phone the police and let them decide whose who's it is, because I want to know from the board how come you had a British champion who never had a belt? That's disgusting. So I've got no time really for the board. And after the Nicky Piper fight, which was in 94, my next defence of my British title was in 98. In the rule books, it basically states a British champion has to defend his title every six months. But yet, mine was four years between Nicky Piper and Monty Wright before I defended my title. When I asked John Morris, he said there was no being Britain good enough. And that's, that's, that pisses me right off. And then, when I lose to Clemenson, they give me a six month ban. And my first fight after the six month ban was against Monty Wright defending the British title. Mm. So it comes to the Monty Wright fight and I can that makes me smile because I get invited down to Sky TV to talk about the fight and we sat down outside in the garden and the interviewer tells me that they've had Monty Wright down there and he knows how to beat me because he knows how I'm going to box. I just looked at him and says, how does he know how I'm going to box when I don't even know how I'm going to box? And the guy says, what? Don't you look at videos? I said, no, I've never looked at videos. To me, they're a problem, it's a puzzle. And I've got to solve it and I've got 36 minutes to solve it. Because Monty Wright can't box the same way against me as he boxes against somebody who's a 5 foot 11 come forward type of fighter. How can they fight the same way against me when I'm six foot three and I'm ranger? And um, Monty Wright lasted. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Before the fire was outside, it was in your call. And I remember being upstairs and listening to his ring music, and his ring, ring walk music was, I believe in miracles. And I just went, Not tonight. No way. I believe in miracles. Not tonight. And I went in and I stopped him in, I think it was the second or third round, I'm not sure. 
But I remember looking out into the audience and about the third row back from ringside, there was a raster man just sat there and he just sat with a smile on his face. And I just thought to myself, yeah, you know, it was like, I'm glad to see you back. And I was glad to be back where I belonged, the champion, you know, doing what he did. And then my next fight was against um, Tony Booth, same in 90, 98. And this is when the second bout with Tony Booth. And the first one, I think it lasted one round, but Tony never came, it was short notice. He got in, I didn't like it, and he didn't like it. And there were a lot of shenanigans went on at the weigh-in. I remember going down there and the weigh-in was supposed to be at two o'clock, two or three o'clock. And I got there, me and Tony got there on time. And we were waiting. And we were waiting. And waiting. It was a long wait, man. And I wasn't bothered. And Tony says to me, how come you're not kicking off? And I says, there's nothing to kick off about because we're all in the same boat. So I'm, I ain't bothered. And then the scales come across Hull. They've come up two flights of steps and they've come down in the room. And then there's a like, chatting amongst the officials, can't put them there. We have to put them over there. So they pick them up and move them somewhere else. And they're, they're happy with them there, but not on carpet. So they have to go find some board and they put them on board. Now it's time for check weights. And I'm the first one on the scales. And I weigh 12 stone eight. Now I know the scales are wrong. And all I can hear is whispering behind me, them scales are it's heavy, it's heavy, it's got to lose weight. And the official says to me, um, you've got to lose weight. And I just said to him, I know my job, you just do your job. And then Tony both got on the scales and I think he was 12 stone nine. And he went, them scales are heavy. I went, I know they're heavy. Everybody who weighed in, weighed in heavy. And Paul Ingle were on the show. And Paul Ingle came and he was drained. Baloney weren't there. And he got on the scales, and he went, fucking, fucking hell of them scales. I said, no, don't worry about it, Paul. Them scales are all right. Now, the kid who Paul was boxing, his manager, promoter, and agent is a guy called Philip Fondu. When he got on the scales, he was bang on. And Fondu basically said the scales are right. Now, the official pipes up that everybody has to skip off weight. I told him straight. It, the thing is, is, this is all documented because the cameras were there. I told him straight, I asked skipping no way, so if I want to see the, the scales calibrated. The guy showed me a piece of paper that was calibrated, and I said, you fucking stupid, have come across the hull, up two flights of steps, you bang them down over there, then you pick them up and bang them down over there, and then you tell me they're calibrated. You know what I mean? And then another guy said, we've got to go over to an another place and do the weighing. So we did the weighing somewhere else and we were both underweight. And then the guy who brought the scale says, them scales are heavy. I said, well, if they're heavy, them scales are heavy. And he just went, yeah, I know. So you were putting people's lives at risks, at risk, because of what? Because one person said so much right when everybody knows it's wrong, but the officials don't want to go against a promoter a manager, an agent who brings fighters in. It's wrong. And the, the official who was in charge there that day, I wish I knew his name, I held him personally responsible for the damage that happened to Paul Ingle because he won in that fight, but he was in the next fight. And Maloney, you're up. I'm not going to say anything anyway. So, after that, the way, and I'm, I'm fuming, I've got in the car, drove back to Leeds, because it's the following day now that we box. And that night I'm going for something to eat <coughs> and have a car crash, bang, head on, boof. I'm all right, but I'm all shook up. I'm all shook up. Uh -huh. And the next day I have to fight Tony Booth. And man, that guy came fit, prepared, and it was a good fight. And it was a close fight up until I stopped him. But, like I said to many people, Tony Booth's a lot better than his record shows. And, yeah, 
that was interesting good fight and then after that um, I think I boxed Salavangi Joe Salavangi for the vacant European that's a story I'll tell you another day and then I lose to Clinton Woods and it was because I was well not because of anything but that the Woods fight, I was supposed to be fighting Henry Wharton and when he pulled out, I was, I, I was depressed, really depressed and then the, um, they got me the Clinton Woods fight and I think we had to postpone it because I, was, I got a virus or something but I remember I couldn't get down to weight and the day before the weighing I weighed 13 stone 3 and I was at David Lloyd Centre and I was in the steam room for hours. When I got to Manchester, oh, where Baloney put me up in a frigging bed and breakfast. A right shit all in one. And I were in the bath, hot, hot bath, just trying to get me to sweat, to lose some. And I got on the scales, man. I was drained. But Clinton did his job. He did a brilliant job. I had one round in me. And he took that round. He took me well. I took the first round, and the referee said if I could have done the same in the first as I, in the second as I did in the first, they'd have stopped it. I wish I could have done. But Clinton beat me, beat me fair, took me off to him, and what a nice guy he is. And straight after that fight, I bloomed up to 18 stone, and it was a struggle. So that was my quest for the Lonsdale belt. I got it. That was one of my ambitions was to win a Lonsdale belt outright. And my second one was when I retired never to make a comeback. And when I actually got the Lonsdale belt, it was my only ambition there was to see how good I was. Just to see how good I was because I was the British, European, and Commonwealth light heavyweight champion. That's like a third of the world. By the time there was four world ch champions, the WBO, IBF, WBC, and WBA, and then the WBU. So there's five world champions. So they've got a fifth of the world. I'm the champion of a third of the world. Anyway, that's just how I used to think. And anyway, until another time, we've got some more stories to talk about. So I'll leave you for that one. Until next time, bye.